What's up, everybody? Joe White here. Rolling through New York today. Not New York City. New York State. I'm actually going to be, uh, I'm taking the I-287 around New York City because I don't want to have to go over the god darn George Washington Bridge because you people up here drive like maniacs. Just had another one cut me off to get on an exit ramp because heaven forbid you should have a little patience, you old fart. Anyway, um, I want to talk a little bit about the, the, a couple things. I'm going to be all over the place here. John Cena's retirement, I talked a little bit about it in my thoughts last night. I don't really care. Honestly, I don't really care. Yes, he did a lot for that company. He carried that company on his back during those years where Vince McMahon was slowly but surely starting to lose the plot and slowly but surely starting to lose his mind with the booking. And But, I mean, for the last five, six years, where he hasn't really been there. I mean... It, it okay, you're retiring. Sorry, but don't let the door hit you on the way out. That's this just the way I feel about it. I and and anybody who ever has listened to this channel for a while knows that I'm not a fan of Cena's work. Um, I'm just not. I wasn't a fan of the character. I wasn't a fan of the constant shoving down our throats and never ever turning heel. Um golly fix your roads new york um it's just i was not a fan of it um they wanted him so badly to be the next hulk hogan just like they wanted roman reigns to be the next john cena and look where that got him. i mean sorry hulk uh, uh, john cena never really did it for me never really did it for me um i want to talk about our boys over there john pollock and brandon thurston because, God damn, they just could not help themselves. Post-wrestling and WrestleNomics cannot let this shit with Vince McMahon go. They cannot accept the fact that this is a new era, that he's gone, never to return, but yet they still have to ask about him. Just because they're named in that lawsuit, which the federal government got Janelle Grant to pause because they, they say, hey, whoa. We want to fry him first before you do. <laughs> That's all there is to it. He freaking was a, he, he he acted like a perv. He got caught paying someone off. She signed on the dotted line. Quit acting like she's innocent in all this. And just let it go. Why can't we let this go? Why can't we say, hey, the product is good as it is as good as it's ever been within the last <laughs> within the last ten years. But no, we gotta keep asking Triple H about his father in law, who he probably has not talked to since he left. We can't let him go let you know, we can't stop asking Triple H about this man who, you know, Triple H's wife, Vince McMahon's daughter, probably doesn't want to have anything to do with ever again. We can't let this go. And John Pollock and Brandon Thurston made it a point. Oh, they're in our neck of the woods. We're going to get in that media scrum. And instead of asking about, hey, how's the gate? Is anybody injured after tonight? What do we have coming up for SummerSlam? No. No. We got to ask about Vince McMahon yet again, because you're a vir bunch of woke virtue signaling idiots who can't just leave well enough alone and accept the fact that he's gone and that there is no more story here. And that, you know, Triple H is not going to tell you anything. When will you idiots learn that? You're not going to get told any more than what the lawyers want you to know. And the sooner you idiots at woke wrestling and WrestleNomics and Wrestle Idiots and all whatever the other idiots are out there realize that, you know, I mean, I'm sorry. You want the company to be dead and buried in the ground because of what Vince McMahon did. What do you want from them? What do you want from them? What do you want them to say? They got rid of the guy. He's gone. Leave it alone. 
I mean, who cares if Vince McMahon gets at this point? Should you really care if Vince McMahon gets sent to jail over this? Except for the fact that it's a good tabloid story at this point. Okay, it's a way for you to go, oh, look how woke we are. Look how what he did to this poor, poor woman. Okay, granted, some of the stuff he did was horrible. But that didn't stop her from signing on the dotted line. And it did not stop her from signing on the dotted line. It just didn't. Uh, give me one second here, guys. All right, there we go. But yeah, you just can't leave well enough alone. Why won't you guys let this die? Why must you talk about this every single day like it's a new and exciting and late-breaking story? You know, you, you sit there and you say... Oh, we wish Vince McMahon would be gone. We wish Vince McMahon would be gone. His booking is terrible. He's old and out of touch. Well, something happened. Something finally happened. To ma- I mean, however screwed up it may be, something finally happened to make that a reality for you, and you just can't accept it. You got to just keep bringing it up. You can't, you can't, you know... Praise the company. You got to dig up the dirt. That's why they call you dirt sheets. It's stupid. It's immoral. I'm and people are going to go. Well, it's immoral for them not to talk about it. No, it's not. They talked about it. They got on their little podcast. They got their mainstream media attention for all of five minutes, just like Dave Meltzer does every few years when something stupid happens. And. You know, now they're just trying to milk it for all it's worth. Oh, look at us. We're going to try to jump on News Nation every chance we get because we can. We just can't stop talking about Vince McMahon and, and his wrongdoings. I don't give a crap. That's what you guys need to realize. Us, as your quote unquote readers, listeners, whatever the case, I don't care. He's gone. What good does this do for the product? What good does this do for the industry and in trying to make the industry better by keep opening up this wound? It does no good. Oh, man, I'm getting ready to cross into Connecticut here in a minute. Oh, Lord. Anyway. It just, it's so stupid and you're virtue signaling at this point. And it's so wrong. We'll talk about the whole finish. A lot of people are saying last night that the main event was overbooked. Um, I will agree as to one thing. You did not need that second ref bump in that six-man tag. You, you took the guy out. Then you took him out again at the steel steps on the outside. Um, I, don't, I don't think that, you know, I don't think you needed the second ref bump. But it did add to it when... They go to that big overhead shot after Solo gets put through that table, and you or you know you get that big overhead shot of bodies just thrown everywhere, and it, it gives you a chance to breathe. It's good pacing, it's good timing, it's good booking, it's good wrestling, it, it's good sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it. It was good. It did exactly what it needed to do. Um, but I, I I over maybe you you should have done the second ref bump and maybe not the first. Um, Ref bumps are a bloodline staple at this point. We got a ref bump in almost every single Roman Reigns match. The ref bump was pretty much, it pretty much got to the point now when, when you see the bloodline wrestle and they're just waiting for it. And when the ref bump happens, the crowd just doesn't go, ooh, the crowd goes, oh, there it is. There it is. Time for the shenanigans to start. So I don't think you needed two of them. Maybe one, the second one would have sufficed with the, with the running them into the steel steps. Um, as far as the booking of the judgment, the whole judgment day thing goes, I liked it. Um, did it need punk screwing, uh, 
Seth Rollins in the process? No, but it adds another layer to the story that nobody thought to add because now it sets up, you know, Punk versus McIntyre at SummerSlam. Maybe Drew, maybe Rollins interferes with that and costs Punk his match, and therefore um, Drew finally gets his win. You know, and and at the at the help, you know, with the help of Rollins, but still, McIntyre's gonna. I think McIntyre's gonna go over CM Punk at SummerSlam. Now, they put that little doubt, that little nugget in my head. Now, as far as uh, Damian Priest goes, he's got to worry about Gunther. Do I think that Gunther's gonna win the title? Yes. Do I think that Finn Balor is gonna cost him that title? Yes. Do I think that you know, um. Fin- by him, I mean Priest. Do I think that we're going to get, you know, F- Finn Balor versus Damian Priest with that implosion of the Judgment Day? Maybe. Because I think that at the end of SummerSlam, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of SummerSlam, or maybe even at, at Bash at Berlin, Rhea Ripley is going to show up to glue the pieces back together. Um, or she's going to show up to. Make sure that they can't be put back together. Um, a lot of people are speculating that we'll see Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest versus um, versus Liv Morgan and Finn Balor. I would not mind seeing that, just not at a pay-per-view. Um, it's not that big to me. But yeah, Damian... And also you have the, another added layer to... By hook or by crook, whether he wanted it or not, somebody came in and helped him retain, helped Priest, Priest retain the title. Somebody came in and through interference, whether he gave the order or not, interference in a triple threat match, doesn't matter if it's a DQ or not, the interference did help him win. And it made it to where Rollins cannot, you know, it, it benefited Priest because now that's one less challenger that Priest has to worry about. Provided that WWE sticks to their word and sticks to the stipulation and just doesn't unravel that stipulation in two or three weeks, as they've been known to do in the past. I have faith in Triple H's booking that that won't happen. (laughs) Um, Let's see, what else here? We got the uh, WWE Championship of Cody is going to probably face Solo at SummerSlam. I, I still think that Roman's going to return there because they're going to want Roman. If he does not return at SummerSlam, then they're definitely going to get him on TV sometime in September or early October because they want Roman Reigns on that first episode of SmackDown when SmackDown goes to USA in October. Um, with the John Cena thing, it's smart of them to have John Cena on there as far as the Netflix thing goes. Hey. Tune into Netflix. We got John Cena's farewell tour going on right now on Netflix. It's, it's good to keep him raw only. Um, with him having a door on the back of his shirt, I do think we will see a Firefly Funhouse match again, maybe between him and Uncle Howdy. Um, if not a Firefly Funhouse match, with a bunch of shenanigans, I do think we will see the Wyatt Six cross paths with John Cena at some point over the next year. Because, and it's very confusing. At first he came out and made it seem like he was only going to go through WrestleMania. Then in the press conference, oh, I'm going through 2025. Make up your mind. Which is it? Um, I think that he should just go through WrestleMania and that be it. But, uh, anyway. The women's the women's title situation, I love the fact that they gave Tiffany that briefcase. And for anybody who says that that women's Money in the Bank match was not completely 100% good, then you're kidding yourself. Yes, there was a little bit of a hiccup at first and a lot of missed spots, whatever the case may be. But about five minutes into that match, they got their stuff together and it was smooth sailing throughout. A lot of good bumps, a lot of good stories being told. I liked it. As far as the men's money in the bank goes, I like the fact that they went ahead and had Drew cash in so that we don't have to keep watching the, the, you know, they, they even made allusions to it during the world title match with Drew and, 
or not Drew, uh, with uh, Seth and Priest by looking down the aisle going, come on, Drew, we know you're wanting to come out here. Come on. You know, I, I'm sorry, but six months of that is just pathetic. It's 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 a distraction from the bigger story that they could be telling. Um, as far as far as the Wyatt six goes, I'm really surprised that we did not see them at all on this pay-per-view. I think it's a detriment to how they're being booked. I don't want to see any more therapy sessions unless it's with the other members. I will say that. I don't want to see any more videotapes unless it's the other members telling us their background and their story. You know, I, I want I want to see them have a match of some sort at SummerSlam. And I don't want it to be the Pitch Black or the Firefly Funhouse or this gimmick or that gimmick. I want it to be a straight-up wrestling match. But anyway, folks, I'm going to jump off here for the day. If you see a big rig on the road, remember, give us lots of room out here. Do not tailgate us. Go the speed limit. Let us over if we need to get over. If you can't see our mirrors, we can't see you. And we'll see you down the road.